Uga Uga is free? No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. That infernal bandicoot! From deep inside my temple prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience! There is now no other power source left on this planet! I know we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And failed! But since your fumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time, the great Uga Uga will make sure that you do it right! After many eons, my evil twin brother, Uka Uka, has been freed from his underground prison. Long ago, I locked him there to protect the world from his malice. Now, free once again, he must be stopped. Children. Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time-twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. Yeah, Uka Uka actually looks pretty terrifying in this game. And I think um, in the first and second games, if you get a game over, you don't see, you can't really see Uka Uka. He's still like a silhouette. And so kind of makes it scary when you get a game over. I think it's, it's a game over that actually kind of scared me. And I haven't been scared from a game over screen in a long time. Uh, Polar... He pretty much was left to guard the house, I guess. I guess he's supposed to be the guard dog. Oh yeah, and then, yeah, so this is where Coco, so uh, the Coco you've seen in the first and second game, she's actually the Coco from this game, which is why like when you saw Coco talking like on the hologram in the second game, she didn't know what was going on even though you were playing as her. Because the Coco from the third game actually t travels through time to the first and second games to help out Crash. Alright, I forgot I need to go pick up Coco. Because some people like to see Coco being played as well. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look. I have a mask helping me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. But yeah, this design Uka Uka is so much better. Like, the design they made in um, Crash of the Titans, it was okay, but I'm like, it just doesn't look as good as his original design. I remember when you get a bazooka and you just shoot the chicken. But I really hope they don't just stop at making like the Crash Bandicoot and Spiral remakes. I hope they actually do make like new games. Oh, you don't know how he looks like in 
was a uh, Crash of the Titan. Pretty much he's red. And like it. I don't know, it's just weird. You, you probably should look it up whenever you have the time. But he's a reddish color and then like he, his hair go, his mask like goes out, kind of like claws, I guess. But then, and then hanging from his mask is bones. But I definitely like his original design way more. I wonder if the glitch stuff is still in this game. Oh, yep, it is. That means Crash can be some broken heights. It wants you get the double jump. It's pretty cool that they decide to keep the glitch glitches in the game, even though. They remade the game. Unless that's it, what the developers intended in some, and when they talked with Naughty Dog, they decided to keep it in. You never know when developers put in some secret moves that aren't on the move list. And just see it there and they're like, oh, let me just keep it in the game. You know, like when Sakurai noticed they had wave dashing, and he said, you know what, I'm just gonna keep it in the game anyway. Man, I remember when I was a kid, I was always so scared of these crates. So I'm like, oh no, it's gonna turn into steel. I gotta run for it and make a, uh, no matter what happens. But in the original game, it just, I felt, it, it felt almost as bad as dying if you saw one of those crates turn into steel. <laughs> they never made any scuba gear for Coco. Yes, the, um, Couple of these levels are still exclusive to whichever character that you originally used them in. Oh, you can't wear Aku Aku in this level. That's sad. Yeah, you're gonna get to see me do a time trial since in this game you actually, um, this is where the time trials originated from and you actually have to get all 25 relics to beat the game 100%. I'm not sure, I have to check on my original file, but I know I got a couple of platinums, or I may have gotten all platinums. Actually, yeah, I did get all, all platinums. I think you have to get all platinums in order to beat the game 105%. Because uh, I believe Coco will give you a gem for getting all platinum relics. And then the two other. And there's two hidden gems that I have to do some research to figure out one of them because I kind of forgot which enemy you have to get killed by to find that hidden area. But I do remember one of the bonus areas where. 
bonus levels that you can get to from running over a certain sign on one of the levels when you ride a motorcycle. Well, getting into platinum times are gonna be hard. I will do them. Well, at least attempt to do them. Of course, I won't be able to do all of that today. But as you can see on the other files, uh, if you looked at them, I already beat the game 105%. So it shouldn't be too hard to get all the platinum. So it does curse this shock. I'm gonna have to die now because of that. Yeah, I gotta die. Kill me. Turn me into a fat crash. I'm now Puffer Crash. This game is so different when you're trying to do a time trial. Since they changed so many things, because you got a whole bunch of crates um, that freeze time if you break them, and then Aku Aku's placed in some other different places that it's normally not located in. So it's almost like playing through a completely different level. Whenever I was using Kirby and just inhaling and stuff, I always said fat guy kung fu. <laughs> that was so funny. Nah, but Willie is definitely the most broken character in Kirby. You tell me if you're playing two players, one person control Willie and the other person could just throw stars freely. That is like very unfair. You, boss, the true arena is no challenge in that game if you're playing two players. A whole nother story though if you're playing three players. I'm mean, three players. <laughs> you can't play three players in Kirby Superstar Ultra. <laughs> if you're playing one player, the true arena is a whole nother story. I remember in the original game all Coco would do was just walk. Because they didn't really program her for anything except for riding Pura and uh, the, the levels with the pirates. Oh, did I kill myself? I missed the crate. I love the redesign for Pura. I believe you can just run straight through these, yeah. Those barrels are nothing. No. 
How did I run it? Okay. Well, at least I gotta remember that for time trial. Then I'll definitely cut off some seconds. Dang, I hate that jump so much. Wow, it's been a long time since I played Crash Tag Team Racing. I always go back and play CTR a lot. But Crash Nitro Kart and um, Tag Team Racing, I don't play that much. Nitro Kart, I don't play much because it just is very slow. I don't know, maybe it's something to do with Zero Gravity Racing. Cause I know it's other games like Mario Kart 8 that involve Zero Gravity Racing are often a lot slower than their other games. I guess like maybe because having to render doing zero gravity on tracks just makes the game a lot slower or you couldn't see things if you're going faster so for some reason they just slow things down. On a game that doesn't do that, that I play, the Sonic Rider Zero Gravity still is pretty fast without, even though it's a game you could ride on walls and stuff. Tiny was such a hard, harder boss battle in the second game than in this one. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this, but Chris Combo, thank you for the follow. Hope you enjoy the stream. Man, I remember those guys used to scare me so much. <laughs> that is a good question. Why does Tiny always try to jump when he has strong arms and not legs. I would just guess because this is a platforming game. And Tiny would feel left out. Um, other than that, I got no explanation.
Pues a ver. Yeah, the, this uh, level is pretty hard. It's just that I played Crash Bandicoot so many times that I'm kind of used to this level design. But not a lot of games do anything like this. I, I would like to see a lot of games doing this. I know, like, I was playing uh, like Sonic Heroes and it had, like, one level like this. Of course, it wasn't really as greatly put in as in Crash Bandicoot. I almost missed that gym. It wasn't as greatly implemented as Crash Bandicoot, but it would be interesting to see an idea like that go into other games, because I rarely see it. Uh, when I was a kid, um, well, the first time I was going to beat the game, I just got any gems that I could and then, you know, of course, go for the crystal. But then when I finally tried to beat the game 100%, that's when I went to go and get all the crystals. I mean, gems. So now, if I ever play through the game, I just do them at the same time. Oh, and these type of levels, when you're on the, um, what do you call it? The name skips me right now, but when you're using this vehicle on the water, I used to be scared of these levels so much as a kid because the sharks and the pirates and the birds that just attack you, like, oh my goodness, they, I was just so terrified of playing this level. It's so funny, like, the things you get scared or nervous about as a kid. Like none of it makes sense to get scared of. But I, I guess as a kid you have a wide imagination, so it's understandable. Oh yeah, and I really hated that pirate that like if you ran into a ship, you just sit there looking at you like what's your problem and proceed to just smack you with the ore. <laughs> like that's just a messed up. Stay away from me. <laughs> like seriously, that's just messed up. Who does that to someone? Anybody else ever played this game and was terrified of that bird that was just on a crate and will kill you if you don't like hit the crate quick enough? Okay, I technically did not hit him. He ran into me. Now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't change the title of this stream since I am playing Crash 3 now. Hold on, let me change that real quick. Triceratops is what got you. Yeah, that thing is tricky. Let's see, I'll change this to Crash Bandicoot 3. 105% playthrough.
All right, so video sh should change to saying I'm playing Crash Bandicoot 3 now. It's so funny that Coco looks like she's mad at you for running into a bomb in the remake. Like she knows that she's in the game. Oh yeah, I remember, I don't remember which island, but like after you beat the game more than 100%, you can find fake crash on a couple of different areas in the game. I thought fake crash just randomly appeared in CTR, but nope, you can find them in this game first. Time for a showdown with Tiny. For the longest, I didn't understand what he was saying. I just heard Gladiator Arena. I was like, what is a Gladiator Arena? <laughs> but he just been saying Gladiator Arena the whole time. Yeah, you're right about that, Avalon. <laughs> Play Twisted Metal 2, no problem, but simple things in this game just terrifies you. I wasn't terrified on uh, uh, the lions considering that they eat you. But for the longest, I didn't know you could just spin attack the lions and be hitting them from the side. So many things that you don't know about when you're like first playing against these bosses as a kid. 
that makes them so much more challenging than when you come back to play them now. That's why I'm really wishing they added a hard mode for the bosses. Like, for example, if they had a hard mode, they could have the lion still coming out while Tiny's trying to jump on you. And of course, get Tiny more hit points, because Tiny should most definitely have more hit points, considering how strong he is. And poor, poor Tiny. <laughs> See how cor mad Cortex is up there. <laughs> Super belly flop. Or body slam. Yeah, Activision's most definitely publishing Spyro to get pretty much that's a cash grab, but who cares? Spyro is a great game. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Which remind me, I should check to make sure Auto Slave Sot is working. Sadly, if you decide to take Coco with you, she won't be here anymore. All right, yeah, the auto slaves, uh, slave. The auto save slot is working. everyone and everything but a good heart nonetheless please be more reasonable with my minions next time hey i was reasonable with him uh your followers whatever the ones throwing fruit at him i had nothing to do with it Also remember I was all terrified of getting killed by these frogs after I got killed by one of them once. Oh look, a tutorial on how to use the super belly slam. I mean, body slam.
I like how the wizard just gives up and doesn't even try to shoot you if you have the Aku Aku mask. <laughs> Sometimes I forgot, forget in these bonus areas you got to think before you hit something. Yeah, it is funny how the wizard dies. I think he dies in a different way if you have a bazooka and shoot him. I don't know why, but I thought his sword wasn't a hitbox. Let me just run straight into a sword. It can't hurt me. I know this guy, when he defeats Crash, it cuts off his pants if you see his underwear, but I don't think anything like that happens to Coco. I think she just turns into an angel. Wait a second. Where does Coco's laptop go? Unless I'm clearly missing something. Her laptop 
It's missing. Hmm. One time Coco loses her laptop is when she's crawling on this. yellow gem off in the distance. Too bad you can't get that unless you did some time trial and unlock the secret route to that level. I don't think that means they're gonna dive back into other games. I really think they just did it to get money. Just because like a lot of people have been saying they want Crash Bandicoot to come back. And you know, Activision had the right to Crash Bandicoot. He had the rights to Crash Bandicoot for, I wanna say almost 10 years. About eight to ten years, Activision's had the right to crash Bandicoot. They haven't done anything with them.
curses. Wait, can I still pass them? Yes. I believe it's easier to get the gem if you don't get it on your first time, if you use the time trial. Because that way you can just quickly hit the reset button. Instead of having to quit and then come back. And Cortex gave me orders to bring the crystals to them during the Ice Ages. So give me the goods and shove off, or I'll roast you. It curses. Well, at least I still get the gem. Well, we can only tell after the Spiral Trilogy if they plan on making more games or this is just a nostalgia trip. Yeah, that is odd. I will never understand why they bought out Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. I guess they bought Spyro for the Skylanders thing to use him as a face for Skylanders so they could get more people to buy the game. But I honestly don't know what they were trying with Crash.
Cause I know there's like a lot of rumors that went around this crash. Cause I remember seeing like that one weird game that was supposed to be like a reboot of Crash that had like actual bandicoots in it. And then like another Crash racing game. Just a lot of things. Uh, the Crash DLC in Skylanders. <laughs> uh, lot, some people might like his design, but I just really hate his design in that game. Oh yeah, who doesn't love spamming this? I used to spam this all the time as a kid just to see these things fall. If they do do that, I really don't have any complaints. I most definitely want to see like a remake of C. Like if they do do that though, they need to do it right. So like CTR for example and Crash Bash, definitely need to have online capabilities. And like some of the multiplayer Spyro games like the, the trilogy, the, the last one that came out, like give that online capabilities too so you can play that online with two players. Or, you know, maybe add a couple other dragons so you can have more than two players. Oops, missed the jump. I would love to see a remake of Crash Twin Sanity. Like if they got together with the people who made the game and like, cause as you may already know, that's an unfinished game and it was amazing. But considering that it's a rush game and unfinished and it was, a lot of people say one of the best Crash games ever made. If they were to remake it and then give the developers and put in everything that was originally intended to be in the game, that game would be so amazing. So spiral, uh, spiral warriors. It would be interesting to see more, see the War Dynasty Warriors franchise branch out to other games. But thing is, if they do that, they need to do it right. Cause even though I do like Fire Emblem Warriors, I feel like they didn't put as much into it, effort into it as they did with Hyrule Warriors. Cause like in Hyrule Warriors, they had like a storyline where not only did you play as the good guys, but you also play as the bad guys. 
and on top of that each of the characters had like their own individual move sets and then they had multiple weapons on top of I keep missing that then they have multiple weapons on top of that so like each character just has so much variety whereas in Fire Emblem Warriors all of the characters only had one weapon so far and a lot of the characters are just clones of each other like all the Pegasus Riders for example are the exact same character they just got different skins and their uh, special moves are different but the Special moves are the same for everybody in Dynasty Warriors. And then include on top of that, even the DLC characters are just clones of characters that are already in the game. Except for like the dancers. So like, I really felt like they could have did a better job with Fire Emblem Warriors. Don't get me wrong, it's still a fun game, but they didn't put as, no as much effort into that game as they did with um, Hybrid Warriors. Then again, it could also be because it's Fire Emblem, you know, they didn't really have much to work with considering the fact that all the characters, considering the fact that in the actual Fire Emblem games, a lot of the characters do fight the same way, so that could be the reason why they decided to do that. But literally, every ar archer in the game, all four of them are the exact same character. <laughs> They could at least put like a some variety on them. Uh, level designs in Crash Bandicoot. I well, I don't know. They're just some creative level designers. I mean, I do know that in since Warp takes place with time trial, they just were inspired by a lot of different things around the world and the different time periods. So I would think if they do make a Spyro Warriors, they're most likely wouldn't just have it as Spyro. They would probably make it like Crash and Spyro Warriors and have both franchises working together for some reason. Yeah, I'm really, I think that's part of the large large reason that I just love Crash Bandicoot. Just the level design has been so innovative. Especially Crash Bandicoot 2, finding everything in that game. Right. Now you've gone and done it. Them crystals are mine. Finding everything in that game is quite the task. This boss fight is so much easier once you get the double jump. Oh wait, you can actually jump over with the, with the glitch jump. <laughs> but I want to beat him the regular way. I just love Ding Dong's boss track. I was so happy to hear it in Crash Bash. Cause, oops. <laughs> Cause the um, remix that they made in Crash Bash, where it was a level dot dash in the final boss level, just amazing.
Tell you the truth, they, if they just made levels like they d did in this game, I'd be so happy. Because a lot of levels in this day and age are just so bland and easy to tell where things are hidden. Like, games are just too, on average, most games are too easy nowadays. There are occasional hard games that they come out with, but for the most part, most games are easy nowadays. And part of it is the blame, part of the blame falls to the customer base because a lot of people just don't have the time to take out and be good at games and then they start complaining if the game's too hard. But that's why there should be difficulty options on all games. You know, so for those who just want to, you know, experience a game for a story, they can do that. And then for those who like, you know, want it like me who want a challenge, they can still do that as well. Double jump. So broken. But yet, they should most definitely put in difficulty options on any game that you can apply that to. And not, not any automatic difficulty options like, oh, you died a certain amount of times, let me make it easier for you. Because there's some people who like, yeah, they may have died a lot, but they still want to play on a harder difficulty. And so they should most definitely provide it as an option and not be forced upon you. Dynamite! <laughs> I just love the name of that level. Haven't we gotten far for a pair of fuzzy marsupials? I am Dr. Nefarious Trophy, master of time and the creator of the very time twister machine you see before you. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex have sent me to end this little shroud. So you won't be leaving my area with the crystals? I swear it! This is the... Yeah, this is the first level where you meet the dinosaur. I don't remember its name, if it has one. Like on the first area of each level to have like a tutorial to teach you how to use that new ability. Wow, that that is broken. That jump height is just broken. It's just glitch jump. Oh yeah, I remember these things in the original game just creeped me out. I was like, is this a prehistoric crash? This is a fish? Like or prehistoric bandicoot? It's so weird. Yeah, at this point, wait, is it four doctors? So we got um, Cortex, Embryo, Engine, and um, Entropy. So yeah, that's four doctors. Where it had like three of them names starts to has an end before it. Wait. Actually, no, don't all of their names start have an end before them? Yeah, they all do. One of the end on all of the characters stands for Nazi Dog. Even though they do have in different names. Gotta let the T-Rex eat some food first. Bye, I'll miss you. 
In the original game, he just stayed there forever, but now he runs away. Nah, I swear Engine is a doctor by this point. I have to go look at my instruction manual in the original Crash Bandicoot. Could have sworn it said doctor. But if I'm wrong, you then I'm wrong. Oh, hmm. so that's Coco Super Body Slam. She puts a lot of effort into that. <laughs> why I haven't seen this yet. Oh yeah, because I didn't really play as Coco that much on my first playthrough. Because I just like Crash a lot more. Oh man, yeah. I love those instruction manuals. They was just so amazing to go through. I'm just so upset they don't have those anymore. Meant to do a slide jump. That's a weird animation for a touch in the lava. For a second, I thought Coco just had a mind of her own because he didn't get burned. So I was like, wait, what's going on? Original man manuals aren't as good as the original ones. Except for the ones that told you like every single level because of course you don't need that in today's day and age because you don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> but yeah, I remember back in the old days they used to tell you everything in the instruction manual. They'd be like, this is level one, this is level two. <laughs> told you how every item operated. Yeah, one of those pterodactyls take you to a secret level. I don't remember which one. I'm gonna have to uh, look that up when I come back to beat the game more than uh, 100%. I think it's like the second one, but I'm not sure if it's that level or another level, and then like which set of um, which set of them will take you to the secret level. I believe you can get the red gem on this level.
these things are so annoying in um, time trial mode. I always get hit by those. You know what, this might just be the level that they use for the ballistics and crash bash. Cause, yeah. Dang, no. Those, um, I don't know what to call them, but those spinning things must have a lot more traction in the new game than the old ones. So, yeah, I believe you get the red gem here if you go up to like the end of the level and go all the way back. For one. Okay, good, I did not need that anymore. Oh my goodness, I really hate those things. No, Rillaru, as far as I know, is only appeared in Crash Bash. And they made him just to have so Ding Dog and have an equivalent on the evil side. Oh, there was one party game I, I never got to play that was on a DS Crash uh, Boom Bang, I think it was called. I don't know what characters are on there though. So if Rillaru has re made a reappearance, it would have been that game.
Crash Bash, I'm a die-hard Crash Bandicoot fan, even though he probably might be one of the worst characters in the game. I will always use Crash. Actually, no, I can't say Crash is the one of the worst characters in the game. He's... I would say he's the worst in, um, what's it? Curse. Oh, he could turn into an angel while wearing those now? I don't think he could in the original game. But, um, I think Crash is the worst character in the tank levels. Because his attack is just so slow and you only have one bullet. So if you miss, you're left open and there's nothing you can do to defend yourself. You just get destroyed. And with other levels for ballistics, that's the most fair and balanced game because it's only based off your player skill, nothing else. For the pogo stick level, I think he's probably the second or third best character because he has a slightly fast bounce speed. That caught me. <laughs> I'm not even above it. Now I definitely must think, like, I know there's no competitive scene for Crash Bash, but honestly, if there was a Crash Bash competitive scene, um, the best characters would most definitely be Dingadal slash um, Rillaroo or Cortex Embryo, because Cortex Embryo's bullets are very hard to run, run from since they're just so quick. And since they're so quick, they got so disappeared a lot faster too. And then, you know, of course, Ding Dong and Villa Rue because they got two bullets. Now, Tiny, yeah, he has a lot of power, but his bullets are so slow you can easily just dodge them. And then, of course, like I said already, Crash has the worst one because his bullets leave you open for so long if you miss. That's what I think, like, if it was a competitive game and you actually played against other people. That's how I feel the tier list would be. And then ballistics, everybody's fair. Only thing I think that can make it a bit more fair is like everyone had their own screen. Cause I know some people are probably better moving left and right than they are up and down. And then let's see, for polo push, um, I think that's really just up to your play style. Cause like me, for example, I prefer crash or a ding -a you know, people who can attack twice because you can kind of use um, one of their attacks to cancel momentum and still be able to fight back. But other people might prefer just having that one strong strike, so I think it depends on the person. So, you pesky little rats aren't going to back off, eh? Just you continue to gather crystals and see what I do. If they remake Crash Bass, they definitely should make like a a mode they could play online. Where, cause you know how the whole story of Crash Bass was good versus evil. And so they should have like a mode online where like two people join the good team and two people join the bad team and actually like play against each other through a lot of the levels to determine who's better good or evil or they can do like some other games where I've seen like they have a lot of people like join the side and then they get points for that side and then like whichever side has more points in the end wins like in a certain season or something but they could do stuff like that you know make the game a lot more interactive for online play But yeah, Crash Bash definitely has a lot of potential for being a great game if, if they remake it.
And then what was the other level? Um, Crate Crush? Let's see. As for the tier list on that, if there was going to be one, I would say that Crash and Coco are the best characters. I mean, yeah, they can't throw that far, but they're the only ones who can do the kick attack while still moving. And so that allows them to be evasive and then throw a whole bunch of crates at the same time at a far distance. After that, I would say um, Tiny, no, I think Cortex and Embryo are probably the second best because they got about the same range as Tiny and Ka, but I believe they throw slightly faster. And then after that, Tiny and Car, and then the worst characters for Crate Crush, in my opinion, are Dingadol and Rillaroo. Because they have no throw range, just like Crash and Coco. However, they can't move while doing the kick attack, which put them at a huge disadvantage. Oh yeah, and the death. I hate DLC and things that should already be in the game. So if they were to make DLC for Crash Bash, yeah, they most. I agree with you, Chris. Though they definitely should put um, fake Crash into the game because he, for some reason, is only in the Jap, the yeah, the Japanese version of the game. So I would love to see him released outside of Japan, uh, and they could add like more neutral characters. Oh, there was a death root? Didn't even know. And then, let's see, so... Did I say what I felt was the tier list for the Pogo Bandamanian levels? Um, let's see, so I believe the... Even though it's barely a difference, some characters are better than others in the Poco Panamanian level. So I believe the best characters are Dingadal and um, I don't know why I thought I had that ability. But um, Dingadal or Ripper, Rillaroo because they, I believe, bounce the, have like the quickest bounce speed. It's a slight disadvantage, but I guess like if everybody were pro players and you know playing against each other, that would make a difference. And then as for the speeds after that, I'm not exactly sure. I have to go and look at it again. But it may be Cortex. Maybe Cortex after that, and then after that Crash, and then after that Tiny. I'm not exactly, I don't know that for sure, so don't quote me on it. But most definitely Dingo Doll and Rillaroo are the best for the Pogo Stick levels. Crunch and Nina for DLC. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Oh yeah, for the longest, I thought that was like a lady holding pots in like an original game, and I did not know it was a monkey. Like I honestly thought it was an old lady. But yeah, that that would most definitely be interesting to see, like Nina and. Crunch get added. See if they can add like new play styles for the games. And then what other characters can they add in? Um, Entranced. He was on the Game Boy Advance games. He can be a character. And then, oh yeah, and then like other characters that appeared in the game, but you couldn't play as them, like Engine, um, Papu Papu, the Komodo Bros, Oxide, they could also be characters. Some other characters, they they probably won't add 
many or if any characters that haven't that weren't a part of the timeline yet when Crash Bash came out because it wouldn't make sense but you never know you always keep hoping that if they do make remake Crash Bash that they do that Which level was that? Yes, me. I think this is the hardest racing level in the game. Even though there's three, four, uh, wait, one, two, yeah, three other ones. Because the easiest one, of course, is the first one. But I think this one's just the hardest because it just has such, some of the widest turns. And I didn't get the boost. This is also an area where you can get the secret level, but I worry about that later. But cause, um, cause the level that takes place during the sunset, I cursed that fool. Now I gotta just win because I can't get all the crates. The, what was I saying? The one in the sunset doesn't have as many wide turns. And you can, if you're good at just figuring out patterns, you can easily get past the police. And then the other one that would be hard, it was hard in the original one, but not in the new one, because you can see more in the new one. But the one that takes place at night, that one's a lot easier in the remakes, because you can actually see now. If y'all know about the one that takes place at night. Like, you see how wide these turns are? <laughs> Just ridiculous. Because <laughs> your vehicle cannot handle those turns. You can barely turn on this vehicle. I'm surprised this is one of the things they didn't like edit because I noticed that like the Werehog and Polar got better handling but I'm surprised they didn't like improve the handling of this vehicle. Yeah I'm not gonna win this race. Oh, that's nice. In the remake, they actually allow you to click restart. I hate those guys. They keep making me miss the crates. It's like they, they push you around a lot more in this game than they did in the original. Gotta take that inside lane. Look at that, I was holding to the left and I could not turn for anything. <laughs> Tell you, the, the handling on these motorcycles, this motorcycle is just horrifying.
Please don't knock me off. No, I was so close. If I didn't get knocked off of the road once, I would have had it. Definitely in the race track that gives me the most problems. Lots of stuff like that. Shoot, I might just come in last place on purpose when I'm trying to get the gym. Because it's just annoying trying to get all the crates with these guys driving around. And if they were to gonna remake a Crash Bash, I, I would also love them to see make, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> I would love to see them make new modes and like pretty much new levels. That'd be interesting to see. Well, you've crashed a few parties before. But I never expected you to make it this far. If you don't turn back... I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe!
Oh yeah, if they remake CTR, I would definitely love to see them um, put Oxide as a character that you can race as. However, they do give if they do give the game online capabilities, uh, they then either ban Oxide or don't give him max stats, like how he actually this stat pool he has in the game. Crates around. Crates? Yes it is. Give me that gem. Oh yeah, I remember when I first got killed by the enemy on this level, I was so scared. I wonder if Coco has the same animation as Crash. I'm about to get killed just to see. Yeah, when that first happened when I was crashed, that, that scared me so much. I was like, what the? It pretty much is the equivalent of getting a jump scare on. I wonder if I could trick one of the frogs into jumping. Nah. I remember there was a frog you can trick into. Jumping into a nitro crate, it's just so funny.
Oh yeah, and I also like to thank Peeves and Mickey for following me. Hope you like the stream. See, after I complete this game, I may play some Sonic Mania and show that game off and show off some Seven Days to Die. And I'm gonna be. You little vermin are way too stupid to understand what you're getting yourselves into. This time, you've done it! And then I'm also going to see if I can do a randomizer of Pokemon and play through that too. But I'm going to add a challenge of increasing the Pokemon trainer's difficulty by 50%. So like your rival, when you first fight them, they're going to be at like level 7. And then like the champion's Pokemon is going to be like either in the 70s or 90s, depending on the game that I play. So it's going to be a harder version of Pokemon, and I'm also going to do a Nuzlocke with it too. Realize that this time twister machine is very delicate. Without Dr. Entropy's constant care and control, who knows what it will do? Okay, that's weird. I wasn't thrown out of the level. <laughs> that's a weird glitch. Oh, 
always check behind you in the Crash Fantasy game. Does this lead back to the regular level? Yeah, I believe it does. I don't have to go back.
Oh man, I mean, these levels were so challenging as a kid. But then I just, I never realized that the AI for some reason just always wants to be in front of you. So, hold on. AI for some odd reason always wants to be in front of you. And so if you just turn like this, they won't shoot at you. So as long as they're not in front of your screen, they just refuse to shoot at you for some reason. Pretty odd. But I guess it's because they want to replicate, um... An arcade. Like an arcade, the enemies always were in front of you, so I would guess that's the reason they made that this that decision to just make them always go in front of you. Oh, I do like the last bonus level in the game because instead of trying to kill things with the plane, you just race with it. And I, racing in the sky is just something I always liked doing.
Okay, I wonder what happened to the bird. <laughs> Try to not to spawn in this time. I remember the thing I always dreaded when playing this is just missing the one crate and having to go all the way back looking for it to get the gem. I like how the sharks uh, <laughs> look like they're wearing sunglasses. They're not, but it looks like it. I think this is the last stretch of the level.
frenzy. Future frenzy. If I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can. Is it this level? Listen. I don't think you can beat this level unless you find a secret route through the time trials. So yeah, I can't get the gem yet. <laughs> he thought this was a Las Vegas city though. <laughs> Man, I wish Las Vegas had some futuristic technology like this.
have to find the death route without dying so I can get the blade the blue gem. bad for that bug to live his entire life walking back and forward. Yeah, 
that quote from Crash Transcend, it took me forever to realize what he was talking about. I'm like, what's he talking about? He's been walking back and forth for 10 years, and I realized he was talking about, like, all the enemies and games who just sit here and doing the same thing nonstop, waiting for you to do something. Yeah. Had to make sure not to hit him to the Nitro Crates. But yeah, just waiting there for the main character to come by. It's a tragic life. to go a few rounds. When this is over, we'll see who is obsolete. I really like the graphical changes that they made for this boss fight. Makes it a lot more fun. Fruit Bazooka. No, I haven't seen how Coco's Bazooka looks 
if it's the same or is it different. I have to check that out. But this is gonna be where it's funny how um, history repeats itself. Yet again, engine has failed to defeat you. What? For this we must destroy you! <coughs> oh, my aching head. I'm not feeling myself these days. So the end is in sight. Gather another five crystals, and again you will have foiled my plan. Or will you? <laughs> that glitch. That has changed from Crash to Coco. <laughs> but yeah. This is where the live stream is going to end, but what I do want to do real quick is see how Coco's bazooka looks and see if it's any different from Crash's. Got pretty far beat 20 levels got 20 crystals and I'm not sure how many gems so I'll have to do the next time